So my second book um, is out in March and I called it The Bigger Picture because I often describe my life as, as trying to get the bigger picture of what I wanted to achieve. Your horse riding accident turned your life upside down. Looking back on it now, how did you manage such extreme change? Yeah, it was really hard. It was the tiniest mistake that totally turned my life upside down. So I had goals and dreams set for the future. And then suddenly it was like starting from scratch. And yeah, I had to fight through those bleak days. Um, it wasn't without feeling sorry for yourself and angry and sad of everything I'd lost. But over time I managed to, to change that round really. It was, it was because I started to think of what I could do and take small opportunities, um, some of the challenges, which we'll no doubt talk about in a bit. Everyone thinks they were actually my biggest challenges, but actually it was nothing compared just to getting out of bed when I had no reason to get up. That was a lot harder. And um, yeah, I was doing it by, by setting myself small goals to start with. It wouldn't seem like anything to most people, but in those early days, they were huge things to me. Which charity challenge did you find the most difficult? I think with all my challenges, they're so totally different. Um, so they're difficult in different areas. The London Marathon took 17 days in a robotic suit. I needed to be patient. It was slow. I don't like going slow normally, but I got there. And more recently, say the flying um, or the biking out on track days, that's certainly out my comfort zone. Usually the only person in a wheelchair and uh, often the only female as well. And again, like the London Marathon where I broke it down lamppost to lamppost and eventually reached the finish line, it is just the same. It was lesson by lesson with the flying. It used to feel very daunting to think I'd ever fly solo. But by the time I flew solo, all those lessons put together, you know, it meant that I was, I was fairly confident. Um, so yeah, they, they challenged me in different ways. What is the next challenge for charity that you have your eyes on? I have a few things in mind. Um, I'm really keen to do a lap of the Isle of Man TT as a charity lap on my motorbike. They invited me back in, I think it's 2018, and then it was postponed and then with COVID and everything. So I haven't managed to do it yet, but I'm hoping with a bit more experience, they'll, they'll be willing to have me back to do that. Um, and I've just got my pilot license. So I'm gonna plan something in my microlight, um, but I don't know what it is yet. And then as well as that, I've got kind of, um, the Great North Run and the Great South Run. So be pushing in my wheelchair this time, not in the suit, but I get a team of people and already generating quite a big list of people that want to come and take part in that and raise money for the Nichols Spinal Injury Foundation. Having used a robotic walking aid to complete the London Marathon, how important is technology and innovation for the disabled community? It's hugely important. If you think back a few decades ago, it wouldn't be possible to do what I do now. Uh, it's through the adaptions we have. So um, on my microlight, you know, usually you have to use your legs, whereas I've got hand controls and the same for the motorbike. Uh, the robotic suit is amazing technology. And um, you know, I wouldn't have done all this fundraising without it. And it's led on to different things. As a bit of equipment for using in the house, wheelchair, you can't beat it really, because your hands are free and you can move mm. around and, and it's quick. Um, so yeah, it depends as a rehab tool, it's brilliant, but things have improved so much over the years. Having raised over 750,000 pounds for charity, what are your top tips for successful fundraising? Fundraising is challenging for sure. Um, I would say a real passion in the cause you're raising money for. So a lot of people, you know, it's through someone they know suffering from an illness or they've lost someone and a lot of people, that you see have got a personal story. It makes a big difference. Like for me, when I was in hospital, I had those dark times, but I also felt genuinely lucky because I got use of my arms. And that's when I decided to do what I could do to help fundraise to cure paralysis. So yeah, a real drive for, uh, for doing it. And then picking a, something that pushes you out of your comfort zone or you have to train hard for. Uh, and then what I do is change what I'm doing quite a lot because it's different groups of people. So mm. if I'm always trying to do the same thing, then it's getting the interest of the same people and they've already supported something. So it works with what I'm doing, like some motorbiking, some flying, some like physical challenges out on the, the marathons and stuff. Mm. So real combination, I think works well. So tell us about your new book, The Bigger Picture, soon to be published in March. 
Yeah, so my second book um, is out in March and I called it The Bigger Picture because I often describe my life as, as trying to get the bigger picture of what I wanted to achieve, but it doesn't just come like that. You have to put all the bits in. And in those early days, just going out for lunch with friends and I got an office job close to where I live, which I could have done when I was 16 and I've done four years at university. So part of me was angry that I was taking such a step backwards but sometimes we need to do that in order to move forwards. And these were the first sections of the jigsaw put in. And if I hadn't done them, I wouldn't have got the bigger picture and got to where I am now. So, that, you know, they are that essential. Um, and I go through some of the challenges I've done, a um, bit about my accident, although my first book covers that in more detail. But also what it's like behind closed doors, because Dan has been amazing helping me out on the challenges walking behind me in the robotic suit catching me on the motorbike um I mean I'm not sure I'd want to stand in front of me on a motorbike <laughs> but anyway it does bravely uh, but actually in the house um things were difficult our marriage was had, hanging on by a thread because he was uh, diagnosed with severe OCD about six years ago now and he's been through treatment took him to psychiatrist psychologist everything and he's a lot better than he was he still has OCD but not to the extent where it was affecting both our lives um, and I think the biggest thing between how I cope like with those dark days and you know that first year after my accident basically and how he's coped with his OCD is that I talked about it I was pretty open and Dan didn't tell a soul I cried he didn't cry and eventually he got much worse and it was through then talking therapy and seeing the right people they move forward so my book goes into that in quite a bit of detail as well and mm. how, how we've come to where we are now.